Howdy folks, welcome back to Boondockery. It's time for a little more ridiculousness. This video is going to focus on modifying a Molly 2 waist belt to fit the venerable Alice LC2 frame. Now if you've been following my ridiculous journey through my videos, you'll be very well aware that there is a vast quantity of packs, parts, and accessories designed specifically to fit the LC2 frame. Some of these aftermarket products are absolutely brilliant, wonderful designs. They're very well made and durable. However, some of these products are marginal at best. One thing that all of these items have in common is they tend to be pretty expensive and also at times very difficult to acquire. Some folks either can't afford to invest in these aftermarket products or they can't find a justification to spend that kind of money to upgrade an antiquated piece of equipment. So oftentimes they wind up preferring to purchase a whole brand new system as opposed to modifying the old LC2. Other folks absolutely love the challenge of upgrading the pack, the straps, and the waist belt. Not too long after I got out of the Army, I wound up upgrading and modifying my uh, medium Alice pack with Fastex buckles. I also re replaced my older style shoulder straps with the newer style woodland pattern uh, straps, which were much more comfortable and they were much easier to adjust. I wound up being very pleased with that pack after that. Uh, just a, f a few hours and uh, some basic sewing, the addition of fast text buckles, and that pack wound up serving me for many years afterwards. Now there are some folks that take pack modification to the next level. You know, they're the kind of people that they can just pick up a random part and they'll look at it and they can come up with dozens of uses for that thing other than what it was originally intended for. They also possess the skills and creativity to manifest their vision. Other than manufacturing items of kit from scratch, they reach the pinnacle of successful modification by realizing the zenith of the item's potential. This video is a direct result of just such a mega modifier. After posting my Ridiculousness 7 video, I received many fantastic comments. One individual wanted to share with me a modification they had done in direct response to an issue that I had mounting my Molly 2 waist belt to my LC2 frame when I was shooting my Fly Modi Pack video. The modification was a perfect solution to my problem. The man's name was Torsten, which just so happens to mean Stone of Thor. How cool is that? Now, after seeing the photographs of the modification, I was like, yes, this is fantastic. And I asked him permission if I could, you know, make a video of it. And if I did, I would certainly give him credit for it. Uh, however, uh, Torsten is not only an incredibly talented individual, he's also very humble. And he requested that I only use his first name. Since sharing that modification with me, he has shared many, many more, all of which will be featured in future videos. Torsten is not just a respected and valued subscriber, he is now a contributor. All of my ridiculousness videos have pretty much focused on use of the LC2 frame. Due to my addiction to the multicam camouflage pattern, I had to limit my search for the component parts that I chose for my ridiculousness projects to those companies that manufactured the parts I needed in Multicam. Due to purchasing products from Fire Force Gear, I knew that their products were very high quality, so I really wanted to go with them for my shoulder straps and my waist belt. However, I could never find the waist belt in stock. I definitely ordered the shoulder straps, but unfortunately I could not order their waist belts. Not being able to get the waist belt I really wanted, I was forced to have to opt to buy them from somebody else. And unfortunately, I chose the waist belts that were manufactured by the Hidden Woodsman. Big mistake. 
Now my issue with the Hidden Woodsman waist belt was not a matter of design. The design is, is well thought out and it's a good design. It fit well. However, the quality of the materials were lacking. When I look at the fabric that they used um, to produce the uh, waist belt and the pad, it's far thinner than the original LC2 frame pad. Far thinner. And uh, I could very easily see this wearing out quite quickly. And the straps are probably an inch and a half. The original straps are two inches. As you can see, they're not nearly as wide as the original. And that's a comfort factor. That's a, that's a comfort factor. And you have a wider waist belt. I personally feel it rides much more stable and it's much more comfortable. The other issue with the uh, webbing that they chose to use, this is incredibly thin. In comparison, um, the original straps that were on the LC2 frame pad, these are twice as thick and therefore provides much more tooth for the buckles to retain in position. One of the problems I was having with the um, strap when I was wearing it is the fact that it can actually slide loose when um, it was wrapped around my body. So it was continually loosening as you know, I, I maneuvered through the woods. And before I knew it, it was down below my waistline. It was doing no good whatsoever. Um, whereas the tooth on these with a thicker strap, the buckle was actually able to do its job by holding the strap in place. Another issue was the quality of the buckles. Uh, when I look at the, the quality of the old <laughs> Alice buckles, um, these are far more rigid, uh, much more durable than these. As a matter of fact, every other pack I own um, that is quality manufacturing has much higher quality buckles. Um, ITX Nexus and Fastex are brands that I am familiar with. And this reminds me of the, you know, the knockoff buckles that, um, you know, you, you can pick up pretty readily on... Uh, eBay, you can pick them up on Amazon. They're super cheap. You get a lot of them for uh, your money. However, when you need uh, a quality buckle, it's well worth spending you know 20 cents more per buckle to get something that is definitely going to stand the test of time and hold up to the um, you know torture that you put these things through when when you're hiking through the woods. And um, just all the way around, uh, the materials that were used to manufacture the Hidden Woodsman uh, waist belt were, were far inferior. And um, unfortunately, this was the only option I had. And that is why I chose to make a gamble and go with the Molly 2 waist pad frame for my next project. Now this is the Molly 2 waist belt, and um, you know the quality of the buckles is is <laughs> definitely there. Uh, the tooth on the uh, webbing is uh, much better, and even though this is not as thick as the original, which is essentially the, the same thickness as you have on seat belts and automobiles, uh, it's still uh, much better than the quality that's on the Hidden Woodsman uh, waist belt. Now there's you know, a couple things with the design uh, with uh, the Hidden Woodsman uh, pad, which I liked. I liked it. They actually had um, uh, webbing on the, uh, the pad that you could accommodate uh, the Alice clips with. And you know that, that's fine and dandy. This one is all Molly. Um, you know, I don't like the fact that, you know, they have solid color uh, webbing on a camouflage pack. Uh, that's one of my pet peeves. But the uh, design is uh, very robust. Uh, the pads are, uh, feel much more durable. Uh, all of the stitching, um, all of the, uh, the seams are covered uh, with tape. And uh, so you're not going to have any issues with the, uh, the stitching pulling free. 
and the back area. Uh, this is where you would attach this to the frame. And when I first looked at this and eyeballed it, I said, yeah, yeah, th that, that could fit on the, the LC2 frame. However, the LC2 frame, you look at this right here, with the original style, when the D-rings are turned all the way in uh, to facilitate a good, snug, tight fit, they were here and the straps were here. So they needed to be over here to get a good, snug fit. However, with <laughs> some muscle uh, I was able to cinch them down on my Mahdi, uh, my Fly Mahdi pack, and I was able to get this section here to bend enough and to get tight enough to where it would no longer shift back and forth. Um, if you watch my uh, Fly Mahdi 2 Ridiculousness 7 uh, video, you will see that I had a little bit of the issue with that sliding back and forth, but once I was able to, to snug that down, uh, it wasn't that, that much of an issue. It held in spot in place very well. However, Torsten's modification is going to remedy this perfectly to where there, there's, there's not going to be any need to uh, pull these straps as tight as you possibly can, bending this up. It's going to design. It's designed to allow the straps to do exactly what it's supposed to do to the LC2 frame. Now these are the items I'm going to be using for this project. Of course, you need to have your Molly 2 waist belt, and in order to remove the stitching that is on the webbing that we need to relocate, um, I'm going to be using an X-Acto knife and just some seam rippers. Uh, these are real easy to, uh, to find at you know, uh, sewing places, Jan Fabrics. Any place that sells sewing supplies will have these. It just gives you a much more precise uh, manner to uh, tear the stitching, and it's also much more precise. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this area here is going to be very, very thick because it's stitched over the same spot at least three times. And that little area right there, it's just going to be easier to use an X-Acto knife to do that. Now you also need to have a ruler uh, with centimeters uh, on it. Uh, you'll need to have a marker to mark off the uh, measurements you're going to be using. I'm going to be using a uh, four-ply uh, waxed linen thread. And since I've never done this before, I don't know if a straight uh, seal needle or a curved is going to uh, work best. I'm anticipating the curved is probably going to uh, do that the best. And I have a pair of snips to be able to cut my threads. I also have a pair of needle nose pliers that I will use to pull the needle out should uh, resistance be an issue um, getting that in and out. I also have a wood burner. Uh, this wood burner that I have comes with multiple tips. This one is a conical tip that I'm going to use to burn um, the uh, stitching holes and the webbing. It will make eyelets uh, to be able to, to get the thread in and out through those. And in order to do that without melting through anything else, I just have a, a wooden shim that I'm going to put uh, behind the webbing when I create my eyelets. But that's what I'm going to be using for this. Again, I've never done this before, so hopefully, especially for, uh, for Torsten, I hope I don't mess this up. Now I have the um, waist pad laid perfectly flat. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to mark all of these sections that I'm going to be doing my stitching, so therefore I'm going to need to remove the stitching that's already here up to that point. So where the original stitching was put in, I'm going to measure across from that two centimeters. And I'm going to mark that. And I'm going to mark that in the top of the bottom. So that way I can get a good square line, a nice right angle line to connect here. 
So that's going to be where my stitch removal is going to go down to. And that's also going to be the location I'm going to put my eyelets to do my restitching. I will go ahead and do all the rest of them and bring you back. And we're just about there. One more on top, one more on bottom. And we're good. I'm going to go ahead and just because I'm OCD, I'm going to pull these loose stitches out. A little bit of a gouge there. So when I do the next ones, I'm going to try to do them with just the seam ripper. But I definitely don't want to damage the webbing. Now I am going to do all of the other seam ripping and stitch pulling on the other three locations. All of the stitching has been removed. Now I'm going to simply eyeball this area here and I'm going to make a tick mark right here in the very center and one between here and the edge here and the edge and those are going to be the locations for my eyelets that I'm going to make with my wood burner and uh, I will be able to do my stitching through those my wood burning tool is good and warm now I'm going to slide this just underneath the webbing and there's one eyelet there's two eyelets there's three eyelets go all the way through now it's time to do the other nine now it's time to do some sewing just take a fairly short section of my waxed linen get that threaded well, the eyes aren't what they used to be that's for sure now I'm going to pull a good bit of that through there twist it, hold it on there, it's going to come undone, but it'll keep it going for a little while. Now I am, Torsten did not do this, he only sewed through these three holes. I'm actually going to start here on the edge, so that way I have overlaps on the exterior of the webbing. Now this is a small thin needle, and my dexterity is not what it once was. I will probably have to force myself to fast forward through this through a good bit of it and there we go and the reason I use the uh, needle nose pliers is to pull these through a trick I learned when I was doing leather working and leather working I was completely self taught at as well with most things Trying to get right up through that eyelet. 
And hopefully you're able to see some of this. I'm going to make certain that I'm going through the fabric underneath without poking too far into the padding and also without stabbing myself. Not as straightforward as leather work. I think I see it there. There we go. Almost. Almost. Come on. Now this is this is four ply waxed linen thread. This stuff is tough. Now you can use whatever you want. This is just what I had and I've used it before and I am very confident this is going to do the job. Using a thimble to do this would be a whole lot safer. And I am quite certain that I am going to poke myself. That's okay, it's all part of the fun. This is a, a very awkward type of needle to manipulate, but I think it's probably my best choice. Hmm. Now, technically, I don't have to go through the eyelets, but I want to. <laughs> Again, OCD kicks in. Now, right here, like I said, this is four ply. That's eight strands of linen going through here. And I'm going to close that off with a square knot. Pull this as good and tight as I can, and then one more half hitch, as tight as I can. Now the wax that is on this linen will hold that in position pretty well. Now I'm going to use my snips to snip those off. Now that, that is good and snug. Time to do the other three. Okay, folks, I've got the four sections of webbing sewn, and all of them are very snug, and um, I think they'll hold very well for what I'm going to be doing with them. And now it's time to put them on the frame. Let's go ahead and take this old kidney pad off. And uh, this particular style was a later style. Uh, I didn't have this style when I was in. This is just so much easier uh, to take on and adjust than uh, the one that I had. I think this is when they started issuing the uh, woodland camouflage uh, shoulder straps. Let me get that off there. Now let's see. Turn this well, probably be easier to put it right like that so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now, this is the lower section, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle these straps on either side through the D rings, and I'm going to feed those through the ladder locks, 
and we'll get that done and cinch them up and see how much better of a job that they do than <laughs> the um, muscle work I did with just tightening the, the jeepers out of the other one then we'll do a comparison. these on fairly loosely here at first. I'll we'll cinch them up pretty good. That looks fantastic. That looks absolutely fantastic compared to what the other one was. Well, I'll we'll show you a quick comparison with the other one here in just a second. But this does exactly, I mean, <laughs> to within the millimeter of what it's supposed to do. Torsten, thank you so much. This is going to be fantastic. Can't wait to um, get this video wrapped up so I can go ahead and <laughs> modify the other waist belt that I have on my fly Modi pack. Okay, here is a <laughs> up and down comparison between Torsten's uh, modification and just muscling down and trying to, to make this to fit. As you can see, this section here on either side is bowed up. Now, it did ride well, it did do what I wanted it to do with not shifting around. However, you can see that this is easily going to work itself free again. And it's just, it's not designed for, for this distance. It's just designed for a wider frame. Torsten's design, on the other hand, is absolutely, to the millimeter, perfect and there is never going to be any give whatsoever in his modification. And I am so grateful for him to share that with me in addition to all the other modifications that he shared with me thus far. Um, that will eventually make their way to future videos. Uh, just in case you haven't um, seen it, um, my Fly Modi Pack uh, video which is ridiculousness seven um check it out uh i have used this quite a lot since i have uh, posted that video and i absolutely love this pack it's super simple as far as that goes i, I mean it's festooned with uh, molly webbing none of which i've used and i may never use any of it um, so this pack very easily could be fantastic without it, but the one thing I do have to say, even if I'm not using the molly webbing, that definitely helps strengthen the exterior of the pack. So if I'm really overloading it, it's not going to fatigue the fabric like it would if those weren't on there. But folks, you can tell the difference between just making do and making it do it right. Now Torsten sent me the photographs and the information about this mod quite a long time ago and unfortunately because 
time <laughs> is what it is. I'm as busy as I am. This is my first opportunity I've been able to actually have time to do it. And everything is lined up in a particular way to where this is going to step straight into my next ridiculousness video, which will be utilizing this LC2 frame with the newly modified waist belt with my eBay mega find of a tactical tailor rhino pack this thing wow <laughs> i can't wait to start going through this and sharing it with you this is a sneak peek and so you know what's going to be coming up but uh, if you want to do a little uh, preview on your own you can actually look this up online check it out on tactical taylor's website but you're not going to believe the deal I got on this. I know a lot of you people are thinking, like, how in the world does he always find all these fantastic deals? I have no idea. I just, I look as, I, I, I'm, I was very blessed with being able to, to get the, the deals that I did and lucky, I bet. I, I, I prefer blessed. It was like this um, load frame. Uh, many of you have commented about this and as soon as I posted uh, the link to purchase it, uh, they were sold out. So um, maybe one or two of you were able to get a hold of one of these from watching my videos, but uh, this was it. I've never seen these anyplace else before or since. And I was uh, blessed enough to where I, I could get these. But again, this was a mega, mega deal for what it was. But anyway, that's what's on the agenda next for the next ridiculousness video and that would make it ridiculousness nine and folks <laughs> there's more to come after that folks by no means is torsten the only person that is ridiculously talented and has shared um, th their craft with me uh, through email and learning about them through the comments section of my YouTube channel. And again, reinforcing the fact that the comments truly are one of my favorite things about doing this whole YouTube thing. I have connected with individuals from all over the world. And a lot of these folks, and you probably know who you are, I, I would love to be able to have the time and the finances to where I could come and visit you or pay for you to be able to come and visit me. Work on projects, wild camp together, because I have some amazing people that comment on my videos. And regardless of whether they are or not uh, subscribers, be perfectly honest with you, that doesn't matter to me that much anymore. But the information that they share, the wisdom that they share through the comments. It is just the, uh, the proverbial icing on the cake. And you know, when you go uh, to a birthday party, you go to a celebration, there's a cake, you know, it's beautiful, the icing's fantastic. Sometimes the cake's sort of mediocre. So I know that sometimes my videos are more mediocre than they are great, but the comments, is where the icing comes into play and i have a lot of fantastic icing in my comments torsten thanks you thank you again uh, the mod worked absolutely perfectly and i can't wait to assemble this new rhino pack on that frame with that modified uh, waist belt and put her to use well folks as always thank you so much for watching and i We'll see you next time.